Irvine honors the Irvine Historical Society, which has been preserving the city's heritage since 1976. Some may think that Irvine is a relatively young city with very little history to preserve, but thanks to the tireless work of community volunteers, the Irvine Historical Museum is a treasure trove full of vintage artifacts and images that tell the story of Irvine's history, centuries before it became the master plan community that it is today. The mission of the Irvine Historical Society is to preserve the history of the Irvine Ranch. The Irvine Historical Society got started as an offshoot of the Irvine Bicentennial Committee in 1976. Even though the city was, the city was very new, the ranch was very old. And so they started collecting things. Well, I got involved with the Irvine Historical Society while I was at the pool, at the community pool with my children, and met a lot of other mothers with their children and uh, several of these women were talking about doing these tours of Old Town Irvine, or what was then called East Irvine, uh, because the buildings there were in danger of demolition. And they talked to me about it, they found out I had been a teacher, that I could put two sentences together, and so they asked me to help them lead tours of East Irvine to raise the awareness of people uh, that these buildings were important to save. My husband got hired by the Irvine Company, and uh, there was nothing here. I'd already been to CUCI, but I didn't know there were houses and going to be a whole community here. So, uh, move we did from Long Beach, and uh, suddenly, as an artist, and I began excited about painting the farms and the barns and the wagons and the uh, rustic things. So I thought, wow, this is really a different kind of life for me. And never been in the country or in some place so rustic. So uh, as time went on, 1970, 71, 72, um, enjoying the ranch, but then changes were coming. And my husband comes home, he's a CPA, and he's working on commercial development, and, and he says, guess what? They're gonna put mm, right there where your ranch is. <gasps> I panic, oh no, what's gonna happen to the wagons? So that's how I ended up trying to save things. The um, Bicentennial Committee turned into the Irvine Historical Society, meeting at the library with speakers, and I said, I want to join, and guess what? Ended up being in charge. <laughs> so the city was very kind to give us a free space uh, to store things, and off we went, just rescuing right and left from the Francis Packing House, the citrus items, to the um, rustic cowboy things, the branding irons and the heater to heat the irons up with. This building, the Irvine Historical Museum, um, was still owned by the Irvine Company, but it was leased to the city, and the Irvine Historical Society leased it from the city for a dollar a year. The building was originally built as a dining wing in 1877 for the people who worked on the ranch and the cattle camp manager lived in this building up until 1963. This particular site was chosen because it was uh, at a fresh water source. And there was, a, the, right next door to us is uh, the golf course. Before it was a golf course, it was a dump. Before it was a dump, it was a fresh water marsh. Therefore, you have a fresh water source, people can live there. 1964 was when the golf course opened up and the Irvine Company used this facility called the, they called it the Cantina. Um, this facility was used as a golf course clubhouse. Uh, I went to plead with them, do you know of anywhere that we could have a little museum? And they said, funny, you should mention that. And now this is really, this is really a coincidence because there is an old building, we're building the new golf course clubhouse, San Joaquin Golf Course Clubhouse, and you can use the one they were using as their cantina. So it was leased to us very cheaply, like $25 a year, this little building, the oldest one on the Irvine Ranch. And we were very pleased uh, because it was old. We didn't want to put all this old stuff in something brand new and shiny and, and uh, wouldn't fit.
The collections in the museum include an exhibit on the Indians, uh, their food sources, their things that they played with, things that they collected, uh, things that they made. Uh, then we move on to the, the Irvine portion of it, giving history of the Irvine family, how they acquired the land, the history of their family. And then a huge portion is devoted to ranching because it was a rancho first and um, agriculture came later. But we have a very nice exhibit on ranching with uh, a lot of um, artifacts that were used in the ranching. People don't realize that there were cattle all over the place. One day I had a, at the museum, I had a Irvine Ranch cowboy come and visit the museum and he brought us a pasture map. This pasture map is about two feet by five feet and it shows all the pastures on the Irvine Ranch and he gave us some of his um, things as well and um, as I say he was he was one of the last cowboys on the ranch and they he does not like to come back and see Irvine being so developed because what he remembers are the pastures. So then we also have agriculture because agriculture was absolutely huge on the ranch and it was uh, mostly lima beans so we have one wall devoted to lima bean exhibit um, and lima beans were important number one because they are uh, dry crop which means that you don't have to irrigate um, and you just simply had to weed the fields and it was very lucrative and it, they did not need refrigeration um, or any special care like that and so lima beans was a, a huge crop. Uh, we have an exhibit on uh, citrus and we have a small exhibit on a, a ranch kitchen. The Boy Scout Jamboree was held on the Irvine Ranch uh, in 1953 and it was at the site of what is now Fashion Island and it was Myford Irvine, James Irvine II's son, who was very active in the Boy Scouts. Uh, he got many awards from the Boy Scouts with his work with, um, with the Boy Scouts. And so he uh, petitioned the Boy Scouts of America to have the yearly jamboree at Fashion Island on the Irvine Ranch. And 50,000 Scouts came to that. And it ran for a week and they, uh, it was the only jamboree ever held on the west coast of the United States. One teeny weeny exhibit that we have is on Lion Country Safari. Lion Country Safari, for those of people who do not know, was a reverse zoo, is what I call it. In other words, the people were in cages and the animals were free to wander around. And so you were in your car with the windows rolled up and you'd roll around through the paths and encountered zebras, and giraffes and lions and and things like that one thing that the Irvine Historical Society has started um, is to have monthly craft classes in the museum and our uh, curator Ann Davis Johnson does that she's a, a, a trained artist and teacher. Two years ago, it occurred to me that since our site here is a little off the beaten path and it was hard to get people to come and experience our museum, that if I could get them to come with their kids, then perhaps they would form an attachment with the, our little museum. And not only that, it got us into the city brochure, it got us on the map, and it got us listed under family fun activities. You need to know the background of the art and why it was formed and the reason for it and the function of it. No matter if you're talking about French Impressionism or the Renaissance or any type of art, why someone would create that and what function. So I decided that each art would have to do with either our Native Americans, so we would do weaving with natural materials. We gather in the back of our property and weave these in, you know, twigs and feathers and leaves and things to show how they live. So they get a little talk about the Native Americans first and their life here. Like today, we're going to be talking about the agriculture, the beans, the seeds, the things that grew here, and especially lima beans, because James Irvine and Henry Sagerstrom had huge bean fields. And we're going to really put these uh, to work 
in a design on a frame that they can take home and you know I'm going to tell them that they're full of beans. Hope they go home with something. A little tidbit of information or a desire to come back and join us for other classes as well. So all the classes have to do with something in the museum. Either um, the Indians, the Irvines, the ranch, the agriculture, uh, the citrus industry, that is our theme. So I just come up with every year a different craft that rotates and circulates that idea still. So they can come back again and do something different. Kids are bombarded with so much um, media and mechanical and electronic and things that as a teacher, which I was, that I had to hit them with multimedia also in order to catch your attention and keep it. And that's what I try to do here. We've also given um, tours of Old Town Irvine, which is a whole other aspect of the Irvine Historical Society's focus is to preserve the buildings that are still there. Um, Old Town is located at Sand Canyon in the Five Freeway, and there, the, several of the buildings there are on the National Register of Historic Places, including um, the blacksmith shop, which is now Knollwood, the 1895 Sack Warehouse, um, which is, houses several architectural firms and um, marketing firms. There's also a, a hotel, which is like a boarding house, the Irvine store, which is now a beauty salon. And then there was a, a small bungalow there that um, had been a post office and now is um, going to be a uh, dental facility. Uh, the La Quinta Hotel acquired the um, 33 silo um, bulk warehouse that they turned into a hotel and uh, the society gives tours of that whole area lasts about an hour we'll do it on selected Sundays and <clears throat> it's free we give the history of every one of those buildings the reason um, the buildings are there is because James Irvine wanted to establish a downtown um, Irvine and it was the railroad tracks came through there and the reason they were put there is because that's the highest point of the flatlands on the Irvine Ranch. And so that was um, going to be the center of town. People enjoy coming to our museum uh, because it, it takes them back in time. They like to see what things were like uh, before all the houses came and um, it gives them a nice slice of uh, what had been here. I mean, Irvine is a relatively new city. It was incorporated in 1971, and um, that's recent. And when they think about what happened 100 years before that, they like to hear about those things because they, they kind of get a connection on what was here before. Um, I know my hometown was a farm, but I have no idea what it looked like or anything like that. But once people find us here, they really are fascinated by the artifacts that we have and the tidbits of information that we have. What's interesting is a lot of younger people who went to Irvine schools, moved away after they graduated, went to college or whatever, and then they come back and they say, I remember that. And I remember, you know, what Culver used to look like when I was in high school. And Culver was a two-lane road. And the things that you had to watch out for were tumbleweeds, tractors, and cattle. Culver was two lanes then, you know. And so it was um, an interesting experience. So they like to come back, and they, I think they kind of like to feel connected. Like when visitors come in here, they go like, well, I never knew this was here. And they says, well, we do have a sign on Culver that says this is a historical museum here. But uh, they come in here and they say, oh my gosh, this is such cool stuff that you have in here. And if they want to talk, we talk. If they just want to look around, uh, we just let them look around. Um, and they always are amazed by what they find here. We don't have the cattle. We don't have the crops, but we love to tell the people who come to the museum about the way it was. When I'm on duty, most of the visitors are 
are temporarily here because they're assigned to UCI or some workplace. So they're from another country usually. And, and it's funny how that happens to me, but you know, UCI is right here and in some of the companies that are here. But what they are so interested in when they come in, they just kind of stand here and they say, well, we finally found you, number one. And <laughs> number two, they want to really know Irvine's history because they, you know, they have heard nothing but good things about Irvine. You know, it's an excellent place for, you know, to raise children, education, and, and all of that. And, but then they really want to know the background. And it's very interesting for me to kind of explain it. And they're, and they're so interested to have intelligent questions that they're asking about it. They, they want the material that we have here to take home. The agriculture is fascinating to them. And, and also they might want to know about even like the Native American uh, history here or Sepulveda. You know, you have, uh, have one uh, school teacher come, she said, I never knew why the Sepulveda school over there was named Sepulveda. Who is he? <laughs> that sort of thing. When they're here, they, they really love Irvine and they do want to know its past. How did I, uh, UCI come about? You know, history is like a, it's a, a living continuum here and, it, you know, and you build on what, what has been. I really enjoy being involved with the society and coming to the museum. I was trained, I was a born teacher, and you can take the teacher out of the classroom, but you can never shut the teachers up because you're a teacher, you're a teacher, and that's it. And so this gives me a, a, a chance to continue teaching of something I enjoy very much. And I was not a history teacher. I was a mathematics teacher in high school, so it, two are kind of far apart, but it's an appreciation for imparting knowledge and watching people's faces when they say, well, I never do that, you know, or somebody told me this and I just have to say, well, this is the correct answer, and, you know, and they go like, wow. And that's, for a teacher, that's the most rewarding thing, is to see that you're, number one, giving information out to people who really want it and enjoy it, and, uh, and then getting their feedback. I became involved in the Irvine Historical Society because I'm a docent at Mission San Juan Capistrano. And I've been docenting fourth graders for like 30 years. And about three years ago, when I was studying mission history, you know, as you become a docent, I learned all about the ranchos and uh, I picked up on the three ranchos here in, in Irvine and I said, boy, that's right in my backyard. So about three years ago, I said, I need to actually come to, the, to check out the uh, Irvine Historical Society. And it just, it just fit in. It was a natural fit for me to want to uh, really get people educated about Irvine's history. Because believe it or not, there is a history here. People that I've worked with at the um, Historical Society are very much involved in the day-to-day -day activities. Uh, I'm the treasurer, so I only handle the uh, paying the bills and making sure there's enough money around to, to uh, um, keep everybody happy, but the people that are here on a day-to-day -day basis are the ones who really deserve all of the credit. They're here with the young people, which is great. Uh, we're adjacent to the senior center, and so the seniors come over and visit, and that's great, and we get to share lots of stories, and the senior people do have an awful lot of history of Orange County, and they're willing to share it and uh, to hear stories of when they were on the ranch and working in the cattle and, and working in the fields. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting to think that where we stand today, 50, 100 years ago, was just a completely different uh, piece of property. One of our um, goals is to educate people, obviously, but also to train docents so that the work that we've done for the last 20, 30 years will continue for the next 20 or 30 years. So we do need docents to be trained in the information that we can give out and things, and it's, uh, you just need to have, you know, an ability to talk to people and to enjoy talking to people and if you don't know the answer to something, you simply say, I don't know, I'll look it up. People are scared. They think, oh, I couldn't be a docent. I can't. Well, it's all scripted. We give all the information so that they can uh, just review it. But anyone can be a docent at the Irvine Historical Society. I think they would enjoy it. They would love it. 
it's good for them. You're outdoors, you're at a beautiful place. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about working on that program and, and inviting everyone at Irvine to at least think about it. <laughs> uh, we need committed people. We need people to come and give their time and their energy into going out into the community and, um, and making the community aware of us. One of the most challenging uh, wishes that the society has is to rebuild the original 1864 ranch house, which was adjacent to this particular building. Uh, it fell into disrepair, and then when the, so it was torn down. Um, so the, the Irvine family is interested in getting that rebuilt, but as time goes on, the cost is prohibitive. Um, funding is always a problem. Um, but that would be one of the wishes that the society has, which, which would benefit all of Irvine, um, to show that this is the first house that was on this 100,000 100, acres of Irvine land. And it would be a legacy, I think, to uh, the city of Irvine to have that. I would hope that with this information um, that people would Number one, come and visit the museum and see what is here and share that with their friends and also to become members of the society um, so that they get our newsletters and our information on what's happening. Um, all over Orange County, historical societies do exist. Uh, they each have their own flavor um, and they also have their own um, fundraiser or their own building that they're attached to. And I would hope that um, people would uh, gain an appreciation for what is here. The Irvine Historical Society is open to new members who share their passion for historic preservation. Stop by the Irvine Historical Museum at 5 San Joaquin in Irvine every Tuesday and Sunday afternoon.